so here I am inside the making tracks layout. Now, the team are just dotted around me, mainly behind the camera, just setting up um, the layout ready for the show day ahead. Now, if anything can be used as a guide to uh, judge size, it's me. And as you can see, for once, I'm dwarfed by this huge layout. You can see the giant fiddle yard to one side and of course the <coughs> huge station of Milton Keynes Central on this side. And it is truly epic. It fits a full uh, 16 car sleeper set into the station. Just nuts. So for those who haven't been following the Making Tracks 3 uh, build, um, just to give you a few details, it is 64 foot in length, there's a 64 foot scenic side and a 64 foot fiddle yard side. Fully exhibitionable, which is its intended purpose. And fun fact for you, when the Railnuts team are actually building this in the barn that it's created, there's not enough room to put the whole thing up in its entirety. So it only ever goes up in full when it's on exhibition. Right, that's enough of me waffling from this centerpiece. It's time to go and give you a bit of a tour and I'm gonna start all the way back there and I'll show you what's involved and what the fuss is about with Making Tracks 3. So let's start on the scenic side. Now, this predominantly is a four track main line and it's based on the West Coast main line. Now, in particular, Milton Keynes Central Station, which we'll see momentarily, which is all the way up there. So this is the entrance, very typical of any model railway. It starts underneath a road bridge, it comes flying through big sweeping curves, very simple, but very effective. There's lots of tiny details crammed in to this layout. Now, <clears throat> being an East Coast modeler myself, I'm particularly impressed with the overhead catenary, which we'll see a lot more of by the end of this layout tour. So, <clears throat> as we walk down, this point here, this road bridge, represents 16 feet of model railway so far. Just to put that into perspective, 16 feet is how long my layout is in garage mode. <laughs> so I have to have full trains come and go in that space. And this is just the entry to making tracks. So while the team are trying to replicate realism as much as possible, it still has to be a practical railway and one that attracts members of the public who are possibly non-railway fans um, <clears throat> to come and see it and keep their interest. So there is endless details on this layout. Now, from all the big sculptures you can see, such as the ice rink at the back, which is easily over three foot long, You've got lots of details, like there's a snowman here, model railway fans, you've got axle counters, you've got um, station signage, you've got, I mean, the catenary is just incredible. And of course, all handmade. There's even the odd uh, Christmas detail for the uh, children and those who are inclined to go and find on the layout, such as there's a reindeer over there, a couple of snowmen dotted around in high-vis jackets, and even the Milton Keynes delivery robots now have Santa hats. Turning the camera around, we see the main attraction, the big station. Now, those four main lines actually split into seven lines with six going through the station, one being a bay platform, just like the real thing. Now, <clears throat> where do you even begin? This station is absolutely huge. I, if memory serves, the platforms are 16 foot long, um, which again is the size of my entire railway. Certain things um, have just been insane with this build. So for example, modern image cars, you couldn't get enough of them. So they had to 3D print their own and they had to make several hundred 
make them, design them, 3D print them, and then paint them up and spray them. And there's even the odd car for the odd member of the Railnuts team to represent their own car. And of course, you'll be forgiven to think this is a um, artistic representation, a compromise, if you will, like most model railways, but no. What they did is they actually took the track plan and the uh, station plan off Google Earth, printed it out on paper, laid it on the floor, and made what is in reality. So what you see here represents the actual Milton Keynes Central Station. It's what we'd all love to do at home if we had the space. So we come to it, a closer look at the main station building. Now, as you'd imagine, no one makes a kit of Milton Keynes Central. So what the team have had to do is um, use the latest techniques. In this case, it was um, laser cutting. So Phil, who we'll talk to in a bit, um, has um, designed or replicated the real thing and cut it out in uh, MDF. And then they've built it as a kit. So they've made their own kit. and. Um, it's just incredible what you can do these days because doing it yourself, give or take the cost of a giant uh, laser, um, is actually quite, um, quite affordable. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more laser cut kits coming into the hobby going forward. And a lot of that has stemmed from the Making Tracks Build series where quite literally you have to build your own buildings because you'd never get something like that in a Metcalf packet. So turning our attention to the north end of the station and something I find rather fun is they've got bi-directional lines put onto this, just like the real thing. So basically trains can go full on into each other in theory. Um, however, just like the real thing, they actually operate a token system off the uh, point boxes we saw earlier. So if an operator has the token, they have the right of way to a particular line, which is bi-directional. So in theory, you, uh, you can't crash into a head-on crash. And I don't think it's happened yet. And as I said earlier, I'm particularly interested in this because it is a modern image layout. So I'm taking a lot of inspiration and gaining a lot of ideas from this, even for someone who's been in uh, modeling uh, model railways for some years. Now, <clears throat> It's very interesting, it's the small things that make the difference. So although the whole station is quite incredible, it's coming in for a closer look and actually seeing what they've managed to cram in, which just makes all the difference. So we'll take this section here. We've got a catenary mass, we've got cable trunking. Obviously you've got your station, but with brick sides, whereas the other sides don't have brick sides. You've got all the warning stripes on top of the various textures on the platform platform benches, platform signs. You've got your billboards, which replicate um, what you see in reality. Although I think the adverts are slightly different. And there's even a pigeon on that station side. It's just to show you, small section, lots of detail. It's quite incredible. And as they say, the devil's in the detail. Now this next to me, you can see is the epic fiddle yard that comes with this layout. And it's absolutely chocker with all of the latest modern image wares um, from the likes of people like Acura Scale, obviously. You've got your Hornbys, you've got your Backman, you've got Rapido, you've even got some Dapol locomotives and stock in the mix. And it's truly epic to see the choice we have as modelers today on modern image. 
It's just a shame it's not all East Coast, but it's West Coast. Small details. Now, how they run the uh, giant fiddle yard, because it is predominantly run by volunteers who may or may not have a model railway or have run a model railway before. So what they do is, as you can see on the first line here, the down fast, you have an empty line and then you have a full line. So each operator has uh, two lines to run. And basically the full queued up line, as you see here, right up that end, you'll take the first train, go all the way around the layout and back and you feed back in to the empty line. Hopefully it's quite foolproof. And of course, all of the um, point operation are done per line by one control box. So it's all quite self-explanatory. It's also worth highlighting now, a lot of manufacturers do sponsor the layout, which is absolutely fantastic, but there's also um, another uh, benefit to this, and that's the Curascale Charity Locos. Now, this one in front of me, 66415, uh, You Are Never Alone, is uh, the Curascale uh, Samaritans Charity Loco, and this was launched at Blakemere at Christmas time with an aim to raise £20,000 for Samaritans. Now, that's a very important charity for a Curious Girl. Um, and of course, that follows suit along with the prostate cancer class 66, which was launched at the Chester exhibition. So, um, at the time of filming, there are some of these uh, in particular locos left available to order. And of course, as you'd expect, I'll put a link down below in the description. So, um, feel free to pre order one of these beasties, and of course it's zero uh, pounds deposit, so no excuse. So now looking to the north end of the station, again in an area which is longer than my own home layout from that baseboard joint that you can see. You see the line splits just like the real thing, although still heads in the same direction. And of course, very traditionally, goes straight back under another road bridge. And of course, there's a, uh, a lorry on the top. Christmas themed, of course, for the Christmas exhibition. Right, that's a brief look at the full layout, but I think it's time we went and spoke to a few of the Rail Nuts members who are nuts enough to actually put this together and then put this on exhibition several times a year. I have found Railnut Chris. Now, you will often see, if you come to one of these exhibitions, Chris running round at the place with pretty much everyone who seems to come in the door. That is true, yes. So, tell me, Chris, what are you actually doing? So, so I, I organise a lot of the stuff that's going on here, make sure all the volunteers arrive, and then we've got enough volunteers to run the track, and then I help uh, run trains with the public. Uh, so we have two two fast lines we run with public. We've currently been running with about 120 kids per day, which is just fantastic for the hobby. And what I do is, using the tablets, we can just show a member of the public how to run, how to drive a train, and then we let them drive a train around the circuit. For a member of the public who walks in the door, what is the process they then go through if they want to drive on making tracks? So, we've got a, a ticketing numbering system, so a member of the public comes to one of my colleagues, They'll pick up a ticket, uh, which has got a number on it, uh, and then that number gives us a sequence and just makes sure everybody gets the, a go in the right order. Uh, and so when we come to the next order, we shout out a number and we collect our next driver. And how do we drive on making tracks? So we drive using the Z21 system, which is a, an iPad or tablet system. Uh, it's quite simple. Got one here. Uh, and so we're just uh, selecting a locomotive via pictures from a menu. So we select a loco and then we are using just your finger to tap and drive the train here. 
and just sewing it down just by using your finger. And the beauty of this system is kids just know how to use tablets and iPhones and iPads naturally nowadays, so they pick it up really quickly. Wonderful. Well, that sounds rather exciting. And of course, I'm going to take you up on that offer and get driving. So I have found Phil, and Phil Morton, of course, is... You're here in two respects, mainly. One, because you've done the buildings. Yes. And the second one is because you're um, the fix-it man, dare I say it, for the layout when it's in exhibition. And maybe when it's being built as well. Yeah, yeah, all of it. So, if, we ask, if I ask you about the buildings first... Yes. Generally speaking, how do they come about? Because these are massive buildings. They, they are massive, but the main thing with Little Keys is all the mirrored glass and everything is square, so it makes it relatively simple. You know, no interiors needed because you can't see through the mirror. And the, 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 all the corners are square, which makes it much easier for laser cutting. Um, Google Maps is very handy because it's, we, we kept everything to scale. So from the tip of the, the, tip of the ice rink all the way to the uh, North Car Park is completely scale. So using Google Maps, it just allows you to get all the basic sizes very quickly. And again, everything's in a straight line, everything's square. There's a lot, but it went quite quickly together. I mean, I see this pretty much, the, the method you use, but maybe in a smaller scale, as being very much the future or the forefront of model railway building currently. Yeah. Like, you've, for example, Phil has done my tunnel portals. They've come from your... I suppose. Yeah, I find it easy to copy something to mix something up. Yeah. It's, it's quicker, because well, somebody else has made it up, so it's just copying. So the, the more you can copy off real life, the quicker it goes. So you said, I want these tunnel miles. It's say two days looking around what you want. If it is, let's go. Picture tunnel mile. Yeah. Um, same with the platforms, uh, Thirsk. It's all ready to go. It then sets your track plan because the platforms are already there, rather than trying to make platforms to fit afterwards. It's just quicker and easier. And the problem with modern railways is everything is bigger than you think. We've just got a station here, and it's 40 feet. And we've got another 16 feet of scenery either side. That's bigger than most of these houses. So you have to compromise somewhere. The thing with this is, you don't need to compromise because you've got the space. As you can see, the, the hall is uh, filled up since we've been, well, since I've been filming. Mm -hmm. um, on the exhibition circuit, yeah. you're very much the fix-it man. Yes. I've noticed you're, you get hollered quite Every, often. I never get, so before I walked through the door this morning, there was, this panel's not working, we've got a short over there and the dead track over there. So what, what is it like bringing a layout like this? Because a lot of people think... It's, 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 it's not as bad as you'd think. I mean, it's only 64 feet long, which is big for most, but it's not really. It's only eight baseboards up the front, eight up the back, and one either side. It's only 18 baseboards. It's not a lot really to go wrong. When it's envisioned this layout, well, all of them, it's about keeping stuff going round and round and round. So it's just four loops, really. So if you were to give um, a very short piece of advice, would you say, keep it simple, less is more? Yes, and another thing is, where you can, separate systems out. So the, the, the DCC isn't connected to the points, so if the points suddenly explode, it doesn't take the DCC with them. And again, I like to separate everything out. So each control panel is separated out. All the tracks are really separate. And it means if one bit dies, you can keep going. Yeah. Well, as I alluded to earlier, I will put a link down yep. below in the description to uh, Phil's wares at Key Publishing. Um, do check them out, including my tunnel portals, if you're so interested. No, the right side of the tunnel The right portal. side of the tunnel portals, yeah, absolutely. Because it's double track, not uh, yeah. quadruple. Yeah. But uh, no, thank you very much, Phil. Okay, and I'll uh, continue on. You behind the bar, Jack of all trades. Well, <laughs> master of none. So obviously you've got the the rail nuts together for another exhibition. Tell us about this event. 
It's completely different to what we've seen before. We've always wanted to do something at Christmas for the kids. Even from you know, the first year in the cathedral, I said to the dean, the biggest, you know, sadness for me was we couldn't do something in the cathedral at Christmas. It was impossible because of the Christmas trees and all the, uh, the events that go on. And, but I always said to him, you know, that's really the audience we want to get to, the young kids that have a train set for Christmas that really want to play with it, or that come early January, the mum and dad go back to work, and the granddads, you know, grandparents have got the kids. They can bring them down here, let them run around, and, you know, it's not a big, you know, they can get, you know, four or five hours entertainment for a five, you know what I mean? It's like, it works for them, so... Um, and of course, it, I mean, it's a very busy day. It's obviously been a success for the Rail Nuts. But what's oh, happening yeah. in April? So now, but yeah, and, and the, the great thing is... This is another clever idea of yours. Well, again, it's led to another idea, because, you know, as you can see, I've already started building the next part of the layout, which is at exactly the same length as this. But this takes us at the NEC to 208 feet. 12, 208, 12. Now, because we've done the, this so many times now, I want to do something different. So, 200, nobody's ever built 208 feet in a straight line, but I wasn't happy with that. Because I thought 208 feet of sidings times eight times, it's a bit too much. That, you know, yeah, it looks great when you've got loads of trains, but it's not really practical. So I said, right, we'll build 208 feet, but then we'll go around the corner and go up the other side. And, th and th that will give us um, three stations. Because I wanted to... to, to this, the stations has been very successful, as you can see. Uh, I mean, not many people stop it. You, know, you, you wouldn't want to be uh, network rail, because it definitely stops at our station. Um, but by extending it, when we did, then when, when we did the Great Electric Train Show, the thing that really shook me was everything was north of Milton Keynes. It was very little south. We had Tring cutting and that was it. Where now, we'll go into Tring cutting, into Watford Tunnel, which you did on, get, on the Getz layout. But now, you'll come out the tunnel, you've got Watford Junction, you'll go round Watford High Street, you'll come into Bushy, and you'll go to Carpenters Park. And so, you know, so it's a real railway then, isn't it? Because you've got three stations, a viaduct, an embankment. And we found out from the, the, the very first layout we did, viaducts are very popular. Now, they're hard to do, because you've got to drop your board to get your viaduct in. So, um, being here, suddenly somebody had the bright idea, well, we're finished on Sunday, why don't we get a van next week, take all the front out, and take this corner out, and bring what we're building here, lay it all up, and, and, and actually get all the boards built in the next three weeks. It's a very clever idea. It's a brilliant idea. Those who don't know, you can't, you can't put it up in the barn, no, believe it or not. We can in here, and, and, the, and as I said you know, to, to the guys that own the place, the great thing for us is, all we need is to lay the track and put all the copper clads and, and cut them. Because we can signify them at, how, at, the, at the workshop. We can't, but it's that getting the track to look right, you need that 70 feet to get it to, to sweep. You know, and, and I wanted, I mean, you know, if you remember, well, we've gone through this before, I deliber deliberately didn't have Milton Keynes as a straight line. I deliberately curved it in and out so the pendolinos, you know, would come flying out and they would tilt as they go in. Well, now I've got Watford Junction. I didn't want to do the same again. I wanted a long sweep where they let, you know, they gen gently go out the station in a straight line, which we don't have on the, on the light at all, but now we've got that. And the other thing we'll be doing for Milton Keynes, uh, for um, the NEC, is we're going to build Blisswood, which is one of my favourite parts of the West Coast. Fabulous hotel at Blisswood. So, again, that, that will allow us to get rid of the big bulk, and then I can build the two boards for Blissworth. I can do them in my workshop. But again, we can, we've can we got this here, we can line the track up. See, I can't tell if you just love a challenge or you like pushing the rail nuts to the limits. 
Um, yeah, we, we're cracking at the minute. I'm not being, you know, I'll be totally honest with you. There's a couple of the members that, you know, are a little bit, uh, you know, perturbed about how much work we're doing, but we are, as, as far as I'm concerned, we, we've only got two more years. You know, we'll all be 80 in two years, and it's like, at that point, we, you know, we can't dedicate our life to, to what we've done over the last four years. I mean, you know. You'll have to retire and get a hobby. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I just, it's, it's, to me, it's a fantastic hobby. Keeps me out of trouble. Oh, there is that. Yeah. And, well, I'm, for, for one, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you do with Making Tracks 4, as I have with the previous three. Well, we're going to see, the thing is, we're also going to do things different now. I've done the teddy bear fur to death, OK? Uh, and so, as you know, because I've talked to you about this, I've, I've watched you do New Junction, and I quite like some of your ideas, hmm. because it will give us a new texture. Hmm. And very much I want Watford to look like a new texture. You know, so... Um, watch this video, because we may have you doing stuff on making tracks for. Oh, blimey, no pressure. No pressure. I'll have to reveal all my secrets. Just want to make... Oh. Just want to say to, uh, to all the people that have been, thank you very much, because it's been a huge success. But also, it's like... Railnuts are a team. But railnuts are the only people that build it. It's the volunteers that operate it. I'd just like to thank for the last two weeks, because they've been magnificent. Um, some days we've been doing 140 driving uh, lessons and all they get is a ham sandwich made by my fair hand. Which leads me to the fact it's now time for lunch and I'm off. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll put the details for the April exhibition down below in the description. Thank you, Pete. Pleasure, mate. Go make them sandwiches. We're starving. So what was that joke you just said while we're watching uh, Pete make sandwiches? I said we should be so lucky. Ah. <laughs>